Hey everyone, so something different today. I wasn't able to write a new script for this Friday as I spent the majority of my script writing day on an operating table. When contemplating what to do, I remembered my book, The Origins of Names, Words and Everything in Between, is coming out soon. So to give you guys a taste and a better understanding of what this book is all about, I thought it'd be cool to record and animate an extract from the book. This extract includes two entries from the book, both from the historic titles chapter. Many people in history are considered great, but not as many earn that title for themselves. Two people who did however were of course Alexander and Catherine the Great. Alexander the Great was king of Macedonia between 336 BC to 323 BC. I always forget BC years go backwards, and during his just over 10 years of rule, he did a huge amount of things that earned him that title of Great. He was considered to be worthy of the title Great from an early age. His father Philip chose none other than perhaps the most famous philosopher of all time, Aristotle, to be his son's personal tutor. He was the only one who could mount and tame the wild horse Bucephalus, not through strength however but through wits. Alexander realised that this horse was merely afraid of his own shadow. Yes, it's believed that's where the phrase comes from. So all he did was turn the horse so it was facing the sun. He also solved the mystery of the Gordian knot, a knot that was deemed unable to untangle. Alexander saw others fail to untie it so he simply sliced it down the middle. This has since become a fable for thinking outside the box. Yet perhaps the key thing that truly made him great was his military prowess. In 15 years of conquest, Alexander never lost a single battle. His military tactics were so good they are still studied in the military to this day. In fact, his death remained somewhat of a mystery. Some say he died of natural causes, and some say he was poisoned. Either way, he died at just 32 years old, but had done enough in his short life to earn himself the title of great. Aside from Alexander, many others have been blessed with the title of Great throughout history, including this wonderful woman of history, Catherine the Great. Catherine the Great was the longest reigning female monarch in Russian history, but while she was most certainly great, that's perhaps the only truthful part of her title. First off, she wasn't actually Russian, and she wasn't even called Catherine. She was actually born in Prussia, yes, it's just a coincidence that that sounds like Russia, in 1792 as Princess Sophia of anhalt zerbets Luckily for you, when you're reading this in an actual book you won't have to deal with my awful pronunciation. It was when she married Peter III of Russia, who wasn't king when they were wed, that she started her ascent as ruler of all of Russia and took on the name of Catherine, while Peter was Tsar and Catherine was just his empress wife. He wasn't the best of Tsars to say the least, poorly educated and very unpopular. He was the polar opposite of his well educated ambitious wife. Stories claim that Peter had huge amounts of fun in bed with his wife. That fun have was playing with his toy soldiers and making Catherine dress up in army gear to get involved too. What kind of bed base fun did you think I was talking about? His reign lasted all but six months when he was overthrown, not overthrown by the working people as we saw later in Russian history, but by his very own wife Catherine. The time Peter III spent being a man-child, Catherine had spent reading, educating herself even more, and gaining support in Russia. The Russian people were happy to have her, and just her, as their ruler, as opposed to the idiot that had been ruling the country for the six months before her. Aside from taking the reign successfully from her imbecile husband, Catherine did many other things to be deemed great. Of course she had the usual success in the military, but one of the greater things she did was bless Russia with education and the arts. When she took control of the land, Russia was still seen as a backwards thinking country. Catherine wanted her country to not only be brilliant on the battlefield, but brilliant in the lecture theatre too. She opened free schools across Russia, as well as a girls only boarding school in St. Petersburg, hoping that other young girls could learn to succeed in a male dominated land like she did. She even had theatres opened across Russia, so people could experience and create their own culture. It would not be a stretch to say that if Catherine didn't introduce the arts to Russia, we wouldn't have the works of people like Tolstoy or Tchaikovsky, making her a very great woman indeed. As I said, these two entries are just a snippet of the over 150 names that are explained in the book. If you wish to discover the origin of more historic titles, as well as a plethora of other names and help support my creative endeavours, then why not pre-order the book from Amazon, with the book due to be published in the USA on October 15th, 2018. Check Amazon in your pop the world to find out publication dates there. And of course, with the holidays around the corner, why not hint to a loved one how much you've been pining over this book, or even gift it to someone who you think will love it. Okay, I'll stop flogging the book on you all now. Thank you to all my patrons who help support Name Explain financially on a monthly basis. Just a small amount of money a month can help Name Explain in a huge way. $2 a month gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.